Hey there all to new friends, it's JC. Welcome back to another perfect pairing. This card making tutorial focuses on the Craft of Flower Amaryllis, new for June 2024. I have three unique ways to add texture to your layered die cuts, and I encourage you to try these out in your next card making project. Before we get into today's project, make sure you subscribe to the Altenu channel for more card making and paper crafting tutorials. My Perfect Pairings with JC series explores crafting techniques that effortlessly blend sure to love new releases and well loved Altenu favorites. If you love these kinds of crafty tutorials, hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of my videos airing on the second and fourth Sunday. So to start my card, you know, typically I like to start with my focal point, which is usually the flowers. However, I'm going to start with the foliage layers because it's going to be the easiest element to start with. So with the foliage elements of Craft of Flower Amaryllis layering die set, I'm going to pair this with Foliage Fiesta press plate from Altenew. So this is better press compatible. It's a steel press plate that you can use with your better press machine from Spellbinders. And what I want to do with these two products together is create a sort of mottling texture, a striped texture on some cardstock. So I'm going to be using the Crafty Necessities Solid Cardstock set in just green. And I'll take the foliage layers or the leaf layers from the Craft of Flower Amaryllis die set. After cutting all five images from just green, I'm going to bring over my Spellbinders Better Press, Platin, and Chase. And on the magnetic chase, I'm laying down the foliage fiesta with the texture side up as normal. And with the amaryllis leaf die cuts, I'm aligning the leaf to the striations or the stripes on the foliage fiesta better press plate. Once you see the end result of the ink transfer, you'll see why I'm laying down the die cut leaves in this manner. So I'm laying down the craft of flower amaryllis die cuts face down. So that's the debossing touching the better press plate. And I'm matching the alignment or the striations of the Foliage Fiesta Better Press Plate image to the single vein of the Craft of Flower Amaryllis leaves. And for some of these images, it's not going to be an exact fit. For example, this uh, Craft of Flower leaf that's a little bit curved. I'm using a segment of the Better Press Plate that has a sort of curvature to it so that the leaf looks like it's curling or has some sort of direction to it. Again, I'm considering these die cuts to be face down on my better press plate. And in order to transfer ink exactly in the place that I want to the die cuts, I'm using a little bit of the Altenew glue tape to adhere to the back of the die cuts. Just enough glue tape to keep the cardstock pieces in place. Then I'll bring my platen, that clear acrylic topper, to the better press system. And I will snap it into its magnetic guides and gently press on the platen to the chase so that I'm picking up the cardstock pieces with the glue tape on the back. This will transfer my die cut pieces to the platen. And now all I have to do is apply some ink to the better press plate. I'm using Shadow Creek from Green Valley Fresh Dye Ink Set. And I'm applying enough ink to transfer to my die cut pieces. So I wanna apply it all over the plate. And once I've applied my ink, I'll bring back my platen to the chase and run this through my die cutting machine as normal for transferring ink to a cardstock piece. And this is the end result of the transfer. You'll see that some pieces were hanging off the plate. That's okay. What we're going to do is use some ink blending to hide those areas that um, were open. So without removing anything from my platen, I'm using Mountain Pine. This is still from Green Valley. And I'm using a mini ink blending brush to create a gradient at the base of the leaves. And this will also hide the pieces of the cardstock that did not match any of the patterns on the better press plate. And in the end, you won't see the base of the leaves the majority of the time because they'll be tucked behind many of the focal flower images. So now what I'm doing is removing the adhesive from the back of the die cuts. I'm using the stamp conditioning eraser set, the older set without the floral print on it. And I like these erasers because they gently remove any adhesive, any stray adhesive that you might have on your card stock or on your card project. And once you remove the eraser residue, the glue tape residue also comes off with it. So now what I'm left with are non-sticky pieces of card stock. And with these variegated or striated foliage elements, I'll set these aside and work on other foliage elements with my perfect pairing. 
These foliage dies come from Craft of Flower Japanese Anemone Layering Die Set. And I think that mixing these foliage elements is going to balance the single veined image of the Craft of Flower Amaryllis. And what I did was I cut some just green foliage elements and also another green cardstock that I had in my stash from the Craft of Flower Anemone, Japanese Anemone uh, layering die set. And the other way I'm going to add a little bit of interesting texture to these foliage elements is by first laying them on my sticky mat grid. And I'll also bring in the layering stencil set that comes with Build a Garden Sulfur Cosmos. This is the Build a Garden for July 2024. And what I'm looking for is the foliage stencil layer. So this is stencil layer number three in the set. With Grassfield Fresh Dye Ink, I'm using the open areas of the foliage stencil to very, and I mean very roughly match, the uh, images of the Craft of Flower Anemone. And you'll see as I'm applying this grass field color all around the foliage elements from Craft of Flower Japanese Anemone, is I'm creating these fake veining details. So on the darker cardstock, the just green cardstock, I used grass field. And on these lighter cardstock pieces, I'm using Firefly. And again, these are all from Greenfield's Fresh Dye Ink set. And how I'm deciding to align the image from Sulphur Cosmos onto the Japanese anemone die cuts is I'm looking for the direction of the leaf. So I'm following the vein details of both foliage elements. So that's why you see me rotating and aligning the stencil the way I am, so that it looks like the leaf vein details of Sulphur Cosmos match up with the Craft of Flower Japanese Anemone die cuts. And you'll see this gently opposes the Craft of Flower Amaryllis Foliage Fiesta press plate textured images. And I think together this is going to create a really interesting looking bouquet. So now I'll set all the foliage elements aside and work on the major focal points of this card bouquet, which come from Craft of Flower Amaryllis. So what we know as Amaryllis is actually from the genus Hippiastrum, and these are the indoor flowering bulbs that bloom around November or December for Christmas, or what are typically given away as holiday gifts. And what I love about these flowers is the beautiful veining details on the flowers, the multiple colors that they come in. And if you've ever seen these in real life, you'll know that these blooms are huge and the blooms last for such a long time. So anyway, in order to color these die cut leaves, I'm actually starting with some specialty paper. This is called crepe paper. I got mine online after a failed DIY project that I just didn't really care for. And I've been hoarding a set of these in my crafty studio. And I thought I'd give it a try using this crepe paper on these layering die sets. I have the keyhole alignment flower as my first example using this red crepe paper. And what I'm doing is matching the vein detail in the die cut to the parallel veining texture of the crepe paper. I will end up die cutting multiple segments of the same die to ensure that the veining detail matches with the parallel veining texture. So that's why you see me laying these fragments of the crepe paper down in various directions, because I want the direction of the petals to be different. To illustrate this, I'm using the Altenew Mini Blossom die cutting machine. So in order to create my die cutting sandwich, what I have is the B acrylic cutting plate. Then I have the die set on top, and the etching, the die cut etching, is facing towards me. And then piece by piece with the crepe paper, I'm lying this on top of the steel die. And then I'll finish with the A cutting plate. For me, I also needed the mini blossom shim to cut all the way through. And so what I'm left with is a fragment of one of the layers in the Craft of Flower Amaryllis set. I like to ensure that I also capture a little bit of the keyhole or the alignment schematic on each layer. And this will help me align my pieces later when I start gluing things down. So I'm going to keep cutting fragments of each of these petals. So you'll see that here's one of the layers in Craft of Flower Amaryllis. And then for this lower piece here, I'm using another segment of the crepe paper and aligning the veining details of both the crepe paper and the die cut so that what I'm left with is a piece that matches the direction of the petal. 
Now, for the most part, this is not going to be exact, but I'm just trying to get a rough direction because it's going to help us create some interesting texture later when we start assembling these blooms. So I'm creating directional fragments of each of the layers found in Craft of Flower Amaryllis, and this is just the keyhole alignment schematic. And in this set, there are six petals to this flower. So by the end of this, you'll see that I'll have six different fragments of petals for this flower. So in order to glue all these pieces together, with these small fragments of paper that are similar in color to my crepe paper, I'm creating gluing guides for these fragile segments. And I'm making sure that I'm capturing the alignment center for each of these layers. So you'll see it's not going to be very exact, but this is going to help align these fragile crepe paper pieces. So with these two guides, I'll glue down the crepe paper pieces on top. And using the alignment holes on these crepe paper fragments and the cardstock piece is going to help me make sure that I'm aligning these pieces together correctly. Off to the side, I'm actually referencing the layering guide so I know which pieces actually go together. And I also want to make sure that my layers are not upside down. As I'm gluing my crepe paper to my cardstock alignment, I'm making sure to cut off the petals that do not match the striations or the veinings of the crepe paper. So again, these veining details should run parallel to the image. And that's also why I still have the steel die in view, because it's helping me place my petal fragments in the right spot. So with a little bit of liquid adhesive and no particular order, I'm cutting off the excess petals, and then making sure the alignment holes match. So it might make a little bit more sense in this three petal grouping here. And then what I'm going to do is cut off a little bit of the excess of my cardstock guide. And now here are my six petals all together. Now we can treat this as a solid cardstock piece. To create that deep red center, for the amaryllis bloom that I'm creating, I'm using Berry Mocha. This is from Tea Party Fresh Dye Ink Set. And these ink sets are new for July 2024. I'm creating deep red centers for all of my amaryllis blooms. Now, I actually don't want to glue anything yet because I'm still missing the flower centers. But I also want to ensure that this dye ink dries on top of the crepe paper before I start manipulating it because it's fragile, almost like tissue paper. So I don't want anything to rip. There's a second image in Craft of Flower Amaryllis with the Arrow alignment guide. And on this flower, I'm still doing the same principle or technique where I'm aligning the embossing of the die set to the parallel lines of the crepe paper. So that my end result of the crepe paper, when it's all glued down, emerges from the center, sort of like a firework. I'll use the same scrap cardstock pieces to create my center alignment guide. And then I'll make sure that I'm gluing down the right petals to each layer. And I'll also trim the cardstock guide so that it doesn't show when these petals are curled. With the same Berry Mocha ink, I'll apply a deep red center to the Arrow Alignment Guide Amaryllis. And after a quick dry fit to ensure that I have all the petals in the right place, I'll set this second flower from Craft of Flower Amaryllis aside. There are some Altenew Craft of Flower layering die sets that work better than others for this crepe paper technique. For example, Japanese Anemone is one of them, which is why I use the foliage elements from the die sets. Because the veining details radiate from a fairly small centerpiece, so I would take a look at your Craft of Flowers that have the keyhole system to them, because some of them are going to work the best for this. So Gardenia layering die set is another one that'll work great because you can cut each individual petal in the parallel direction of the vein detail in the flower. The foliage elements in this die set work well too. Another one that works well is Hibiscus layering die set. So you'll see the embossed vein details of Hibiscus also match the parallel lines of the crepe paper. And then a keyhole alignment system die that might not work as well. 
or might require a little bit more piecing is the April Kiss Camellia layering die set. And the reason for this one is the center is sort of bulky in this die set. The foliage layers are great if you want to use those for the crepe paper. But this is one I might not use for this crepe paper technique. The single flower I want to use from Japanese Anemone is the triangle alignment dies. And in my crepe paper set I have this pink color that I think will go really beautifully with the red amaryllis. And again, I'm matching the parallel lines of the crepe paper to the striations of the die to get the wonderful veiny texture of the petals. And again, for me, I need the metal shim to ensure that I'm cutting through the crepe paper. But otherwise, this die set has five petals, so I should end up with five fragments. And again, I'll use a similarly colored cardstock to cut out the center alignment pieces of the flower. And then I'll bring in my crepe paper pieces and glue them to the guides. And if I have a little bit of excess from the cardstock guide, I'll make sure to turn the die cut over and cut these off so that they don't show through the petals. And in Tea Party Fresh Dye Ink Sets, I'm using Pink Pearl to create a glowy gradient in the center of the Japanese anemone. So that finishes the more challenging aspect of this card. It takes a little bit of time to ensure that your parallel lines match up with the die set. But I assure you the texture that you'll get at the end of this card is absolutely stunning. It feels so real when you finally get these all assembled. So we're missing a few pieces to these flowers, which are the flower centers. And in order to oppose the striation, the veining details of the petals, I figured it would be fun to bring in a little bit of glitter cardstock. I find that Altenew's glitter cardstock is some of the best. It die cuts beautifully, especially for these really fine pieces. And I love using them with sentiments. I think they just create such a high impact for small areas. And so from the Gilded Glitter Cardstock set, I'll cut all the anthers that I need for these three flowers. So for the Japanese anemone, I need the Triangle Alignment Guide. And then in Craft a Flower Amaryllis, that's that really small die on the bottom right. And then with the remaining two die cuts, I'll cut fragments of the scrap green cardstock I have in my stash. And once I've glued the glitter piece and the solid cardstock piece together, I'll use a little bit of Shadow Creek and a mini ink blending brush to create some slight detail and dimension in each of these die cut pieces. So to assemble these flower pieces, you follow the layering guide just as normal. The only difference is that you have crepe paper texture instead of a solid cardstock texture. So for the keyhole alignment flower, I'm just aligning all the keyhole layers and following the order that's found on the back of the craft of flower packaging. So that's the same for the keyhole and the arrow alignment flowers. And then for Japanese anemone, I'll make sure to reference the triangle layering schematic. And then to finish the petals, I'll put the glitter cardstock and solid green cardstock center and align it to the triangle underneath. So you can leave these crepe paper flowers as is. But the beautiful thing about this crepe paper is when you pull on it, and you'll pull on this paper very gently, perpendicular to the parallel lines, you create this sort of cupped texture to each of the petals. It's going to add instant dimension to each of the petals and the flowers, and it just makes it look so much more lifelike, and I love that. So if this is your first time trying this, I would try it with a scrap piece of the crepe paper, and you'll see how you can pull and manipulate these petals to create really lifelike folds in the petals. Once you pull on the crepe paper, there is no undoing your action. So once you pull along these lines, you know, make sure that you like how much tension you're giving on the paper. And then if you need to do more, make sure you pull a little bit more. But of course, don't pull too hard and then you end up ripping the petal and all the work you just did. To create more of a cupped texture, I'm sort of pulling in the center of the petal. And then to create a ruffled edge to the petal, I'm pulling, of course, on the edge of the petal. And doing a combination of both of these actions 
makes a really ruffled and delicate flower for your card front. So you'll see in comparison to both amaryllis flowers how much dimension you get. One is quite flat and the other one is more lifelike and it comes at you in different directions and at different depths, creating so much impact and so much texture on your card. So I'll repeat this pulling action on the second amaryllis flower and once I'm happy with the result then I'll do the same thing on the Japanese anemone. And then after that, it's simply arranging this bouquet however you'd like. I did a quick draft here just to get an idea of where I want my sentiment to go. But otherwise, I glued down all of my floral pieces to a panel of white cardstock. And I used layers of instant dimension foam tape to raise the flower elements at different depths so that the bouquet is overflowing on the card. And then after that, I framed my flowers with the textured foliage elements. So that's the Foliage Fiesta Better Press Plate texture, as well as the Sulphur Cosmos Japanese Anemone pairing. And tuck those and frame those all around my flower elements, my crepe paper flower elements. And before I added the sentiment, I used the metallic watercolor pan set in Enchanted Gold to add splatter all around the bouquet. I thought this was giving a beautiful holiday vibe already. And then my sentiment comes from Build a Garden Sulfur Cosmos. This is the Feel Better Soon sentiment, and I white heat embossed on top of brushed gold cardstock and used the Sulfur Cosmos add on die set to cut out the offset layer of the sentiment. Then I added more shine in the form of sequins to complement the metallic splatter, the brushed gold guard stock, and the glitter card stock. And that finishes this really dimensional card using some interesting textures from better press plates, stencils, glitter card stocks, and specialty paper if you've got it. My series encourages you to shop your existing Altenew stash and rekindle their love with newer releases. Perfect Pairings with JC airs on the Altenew channel every second and fourth Sunday of the month. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Perfect Pairing episode with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello there, did that video just spark your creativity? And do you want more project ideas and inspiration videos too? Well, if you do, please make sure that you subscribe to the Altenew YouTube channel. Also, make sure that you do click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching, bye-bye.